In this lesson, we will use the ping utility to assess organizational security. So what is ping? Ping is a utility used to test the reachability and responsiveness of a network host or IP address. Network administrators and computer users use ping. Ping can be used at any time when network connectivity needs to be tested or diagnosed. Ping can be used on any computer or device connected to a network, whether it's a local area network or the internet. And ping is used to troubleshoot network connectivity issues, determine network delays, identify packet lost, and verify if a host or IP address is reachable. How does ping work? Ping works by sending ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol, echo request messages to the target host or IP address and waits for the ICMP echo reply. It's like ringing the doorbell and waiting for a reply. The round trip time and any packet lost are measured and displayed as results. Well, the how is why we're here, so let's get into it. First, you'll need the companion guide, which you can find through the link in the show notes below. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to the channel to ensure you never miss any new videos. A quick word on how I have my work environment set up. I like to keep the companion guide on the left side of the screen, or if I have a dual monitor, I place the instructions on my left monitor and I work on the right side of my desk. Very simply, and similar to an airplane cockpit. The point is, I have instructions or notes that I can reference and I perform the work on another screen or window. Please feel free to set up your screen any way that you like. Okay, so here we are. We have our companion guide on the left here about the ping utility and we have Kali Linux here that we're going to run our commands. Now we have full video tutorials about how to install Kali Linux and how to get your cybersecurity penetration test lab up and running. But in this video, we're going to talk about ping. So let's get right into it. So I have my checklist over here and this is more of a checklist and not a do list. I'm just going to run through this here. You can download the companion guide. It says first one, we want to open up a terminal session going into Kali. So I'm going to go over on the Kali side, make sure that's selected. I'm going to do control alt T and that's going to launch a terminal view. And I think I like this view here, but I want to make it a little bit bigger so I can use control plus to make the command prompt just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and tick this here and I'm going to type ping. It says I can ping Google. So I'm going to ping google.com and I see I get some activity right so I'm going to check this off as a checklist I hit the enter command and it's giving me some replies uh, I like that and it says control Z to stop control Z to stop so let's go ahead to Kali Linux here control Z to stop and now let's observe the output so my command was ping google.com I ping Google I got an IP address Okay, good. And it also gave me the domain name of the routers that it's going to. Now remember what ping is, is essentially a packet that we're sending out to see if a host is reachable or not. It's sending an ICMP request, Internet Control Message Protocol. It sends it out. And then if the host is reachable and also responding, it sends an ICMP request. Uh, request right back. So it's a echo reply. So we send a request, we get an echo reply. And this is how we know if this is working out nicely. So this is good. This is one quick observation of what that will look like with ping. So I did the control Z. I observed the output and we see that control Z stops this. We'll see a little bit more on different options here. So I'm going to clear the screen here so we can get that to the top. And now in this example that I showed before, the ping was going relatively quickly and it was just going on consistently. I don't want to do that. I may want to only send five packets. So let's do ping. Minus C is the uh, count flag. I'm going to say five and I'm going to only send five packets and take a look and see what happens there. So in this command, I use the minus C option and only five packets. One, two, three, four, five. This is the ICMP sequence. Again, internet control message protocol. And we'll talk about time to live in a little bit here. And now we're taking a look at the statistics. This is the important piece that we're looking at, especially for diagnostics. It says five packets were transmitted, 64 byte packages. 
five were received, zero packet loss, zero percent packet loss, which means that I sent five packets, five packets came back, the time was 400 milliseconds, and the return trip, the round trip time, the minimum time here was, the smallest one was 12386. So 12386 was the smallest one, they rounded up. Uh, the longest time, the average time for all of this was 13 milliseconds. The max time was 14. We'll come back to MDEV in a moment. I will have a video tutorial strictly on MDEV. So what we're looking at here are two different flavors of ping. We can do ping with a flag with a count that will only send a specific number of packets. In this case here it was five. Or if I just use ping natively, by the way I'm just up arrowing on my keyboard here, it goes continuously until we stop it. In order to stop it, you need the Control Z option in Kali Linux to do that. So I'm doing Control Z. That stops it at about, uh, I don't know, it looks like about a dozen or so. I'm going to clear. And if I use the minus C flag, I can specify the amount of packets that I'm going to send. In this case here, the number we're sending is five. Okay, so now let's do a little housekeeping on our checklist. Uh, we're going to clear. We're going to specify. And in this case here, we can also specify the timeout value here. So how long does it take for a ping reply? And we may want to do this here. Let me just get back on this section here. We may want to do that if we want to slow down our ping environment. So in this case here, I'm going to do the ping 5,000. I know we see 3,000 on the show notes. I had this in my history. So I'm going to go ahead and it delays the time just a little bit. Now it depends sometimes on the routers on how they want to reply. So this command sometimes is not as useful as you would think, but it's good to put in the show notes so that way you can explore it. And again, to stop this ping, I'm going to hit control Z and I'm going to clear to get back to the top. And I'm going to also take off my check mark here. Now to continuously ping, this is a Windows command. If you are on Windows, Windows send four packets by default. So for example, if I'm here, this is what it looks like on a Windows device. On a Windows device, it's only four by default. So you get four packets and then it stops. If you want to do continuous ping on Windows, you use the minus T option. Same with, um, the minus A, this resolves the intermediate routers. So if you notice here, I'm pinging Google. This is giving me the intermediate routers and is giving me the, not only the address, but it's also giving me the address resolution. In order to do this in windows, you will have to use the minus A command. Okay. So just wanted to just show you this. So you have it in the show notes. We're using Kali Linux because that is the basis of our pen test lab. It's going to be our offensive security machine. So most of our utilities will be coming from the Kali Linux perspective and we'll be using Ubuntu or Windows devices as our target devices. Let's drop down to packet size. So you see here we have a packet size of uh, 64 bytes. Now we can make this a little bit bigger if we wanted to. So for example, in this command here, I'm going to do ping minus s to set the packet size and it's going to say 64 i complete that and we have the 64 bytes and there's also an 8 byte header okay so now we're going to increase the ping packet size so let's take a look and see what does it look like by default and this time i'm going to ping something different i'm going to ping 8.8.8.8 to illustrate two things one we can ping by domain name which was google.com in the previous example or we can ping by IP address. 8.8.8.8 or quad eight is Google's DNS server, domain naming service. We'll talk about that later also when we do NS lookups. And if I ping that by default, if you notice one, it's a continuous ping. I have to stop it at some point and it's 64 bytes. Okay. I may want to do a couple of things, which is I may want to change the byte size. In other words, make it a bigger packet. In order to do that, I'm going to use the minus S command. So, or TAC. So I'm going to go back into um, Kali Linux. I'm going to ping minus S is the switch. 
I'm going to say 64 is the size and rather than google.com I'm going to just do 8.8.8.8 .8 we won't do the count just yet I just want you to see how these are constructed and now I'm going to ping and it's a continuous ping but if you notice that there is an 8 byte difference I explained that here but mainly it's the ping packet as well as ICMP so we have a slightly bigger packet here now this can be very important here and I want to explain something here this is what sometimes is called a ping bomb which is depending on the router or how networks are configured I can make a ping packet so big that it overwhelms a network interface card or a network device now usually the largest ping size is about 1500 that's the largest ethernet frame unless you have jumbo frames but 1500 is usually what is the max ping size we just want to um, give you an example of what that looks like here we also have the time to live so if you see the time to live the concept with the time to live is that we want a packet eventually to time out not necessarily because of time but the number of routers that it's going to hop over so let's take a look at that just real quickly here. So we see we have our time to live. I'm going to clear the screen. Okay, so now that our screen is cleared, let's go ahead on the Kali side to make sure we're going to ping minus T 10 Google. I'll auto complete that. And we see that the time to live value has been exceeded. So basically what that means is that the data packet has traveled through too many routers on the way to its destination and it has been discarded. So we want to make sure that there aren't any type of loops. So at some point, a time to live packet, most packets will time out after zero. When they get to zero, it's discarded. This is to make sure that a ping packet is not going around the internet indefinitely. At some point, after it crosses too many routers or bridges, as we like to say in an uh, analogous way, it eventually times out and then that packet is discarded. So let's go back to our checklist and click on the increase size. We check that out to see what the size look like. We also went ahead and took a look at the time to live value that we can play with. So I'm going to clear the screen one more time and experiment with this a little bit. This is what it looks like with the minus 10. And I'm actually going to up arrow and I'm just going to make this to 11 and let's see what happens. The difference between a T minus 11 and this time only C. So this is demonstrating two things. One, I can combine these switches or these options or tack. So minus T is the time to live value. Minus C is the count. I only want six packets and the time to live is at 11. And let's see what that looks like. And we see so far, there's a pretty big difference, which is on 10, it timed out. The time to live was exceeded on 11. So my guess is that there's 11 hops between my computer and over to Google. So let's see if that's true. And there's a utility that allows us to do that and it's called Traceroute. So let's clear our screen. And I'm going to use Traceroute and let's see what happens to Traceroute. And sure enough, it went to eight. Now, if we want to learn more about the path a packet follows between devices, we can use a tool called Traceroute and I have a very helpful video on Traceroute in my playlist. I'll provide a link to it at the end of this video. So now we experimented with different options. Uh, I encourage you to do that. Listen, and this is really powerful and important. Remember to exercise caution when pinging unfamiliar host or IP address. Sometimes it's considered intrusive or against the terms of service of some systems. Now, why is that important? Well, ping is a diagnostic utility, but it's also a reconnaissance utility in cybersecurity. It's like ringing the doorbell, as we mentioned before, and you're trying to determine if somebody is home. If no one replies, maybe you think they're not home. In ping, you could start doing some reconnaissance with ping sweeps. So generally speaking, we want to make sure that you're pinging friendly host. Now for diagnostic purposes, not a problem. If you start changing packet sizes or you start flooding an interface with ping, that can be weaponized version of it. So remember to exercise caution. This is very important. So I'm going to take that off as well. And let's take a quick look at some of the options here. So I'm going to clear and actually not on this side. I want to be on this side. I'm going to clear the screen. 
And if you want to find out a little bit more about those options, that where did I get them from, I ping tac tac help. And you see all of the different options you can use with ping. This was the minus C with the count. We had a couple of others here where we had worked in. This was the size of the packet size, lowercase s. We also had the time to live value. There are more options here. Or alternatively, you can go ahead and look at the man command. So I'm going to clear the screen again one more time. And man ping is the manual page and it'll give you more information on the ping command. And this is a much more comprehensive manual and it gives you everything that you need to know about ping. Great, we're at the end of the document and we'll see you at the next lesson.